struggles that people have is how do you how do you get into the conversation you know how do you actually open the door and start talking about these things and that's i mean that's a great way it's a very simple process i think if you need to see that again you can find that video online but uh very simple way to start a conversation with people i have on the pages here a couple of examples like um first john four I'm sorry, John 4, verse 7 through 25 is a story of Jesus and the woman at the well. I mean, you know there, it was basically, give me a drink. You know, there, was a, there was a conversation about a need in his life. And then he said, if you knew who I was, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then go get your husband. What's he dealing with there? Sin. He's dealing with the sin in her life. Well, I don't have a husband. I mean, Jesus knew that, but he wanted to, he wanted to bring it up, you know. But he started out by just give me a drink. But it was a very purposeful and directed conversation, wasn't it? Because he was saying, give me a drink. You know what? I have some water to drink that if you drink it, you'll never thirst again. Oh, really? Where do I get that water? Well, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I am he and all this, you know. So he starts leading her down a path. But but started out with just a very natural thing in life. Um, In Acts 2, we see an example where uh, the day of Pentecost, there was all the noise, the speaking in tongues, and all the things that were happening. And somebody in the crowd asked a question, what does this mean? And somebody else in the crowd you know, was mocking and said, they're all drunk. Well, Peter then explained. And, and so another way to get into a conversation is just by responding to people's questions. Something's happening, they ask a question. Something, maybe, maybe at work someday you hear people talking about something they saw in the news or how did this happen or how did that happen it's an immediate place for you to step in and start talking about the things of the lord the kingdom of god um, in Acts 16 it was really an expression of love and forgiveness the, you know the story there uh, paul was in prison and uh, there was an earthquake and the chains fell off all the prisoners the jailer was afraid these guys were going to get free and he was going to be executed, so he decided to kill himself. And Paul says, stop, don't kill yourself. We're all here. There's no need to take your life. I mean, that was a, 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 an attitude of love, an expression of love, because Paul was a prisoner. Maybe he could have said, ah, that guy deserves to die. He's, a, he's our jailer. But he didn't. He wanted to reach out to him with the love of Jesus Christ. So here was a guy who was in a desperate spot in his life, and somebody just reached out to share the love of Christ with him. And the man got saved and his family got saved that night. So sometimes you'll meet people that just need an expression of love. And the Lord will lead you down a path to help guide them toward Jesus. Um, Sometimes uh, there are people who are actually seeking spiritual things or they're interested in spiritual things. But they're not born again, just like Cornelius was. An example, you know, Paul went in Acts 16. It says there were women who were gathering at the river to pray. Remember that story? They weren't born again, but they were there to pray. And as Paul began to speak to them about spiritual things, the Bible says the Lord opened Lydia's heart to receive what he said. And you've got to always remember that in the midst of our speaking, the Lord is also opening hearts. We're speaking, and he's opening hearts. And then you know the story of the Ethiopian, Ethiopian eunuch. He was riding and uh, just... In the, in the chariot there reading the, the gospel or the, uh, the prophet Isaiah and a discussion came he was interested to know who was this man speaking about and the door was opened up to have a conversation about Jesus and that was obviously a very spirit led event next page here are some other ideas I mean again these some of these might be sound like bogus to you maybe they are but pick a few that you feel comfortable with one that I use most often is number one. Do you ever think? Do you ever think about spiritual things? You know, what do you think about spiritual things? Do you think about it much? Oh yeah, like well, what 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 are some of the things you think about? You know, so you it's a very simple question. It's non-threatening, but so what you can do is just read through these things here, and if you find one or two that seem to make sense, what I'm trying to do with this is give you again some tools, because I think in our group back there, and I would guess it's probably common to most of us one of the biggest hindrances we have is how do you actually start a conversation unless somebody walks up to you and says what must i do to be saved you are initiating that conversation you know how do you actually go about it 
And, you know, even another thing is being able to take a conversation that is general about water, a drink, or whatever, and move that into a spiritual conversation is also, uh, a, a, I don't want to call it a technique, but it's something we need to learn how to do. Lord, how can I take this conversation? But just be sensitive, listening to what the people are saying. And when they say something, maybe the Holy Spirit will remind you, hey, this is a way to bring Christ into this situation here. Because you're, you have a care and a love and a desire and you're looking for it. I mean, here's, here's a few examples. I'll just read through a couple of these and kind of give you a feel for what's on this page. Like number four, how do you think a person begins a relationship with God? I mean, that's a great question. It's, and it, and, it, and it, it kind of informs you as to what their th thought processes are. Um, number nine, do you ever think about what happens after a person dies? You know, most people think about death at some point in their life, but they, they think about what happens after they die. Yeah, I've thought about that. And maybe it's this or that. It's in reincarnation or what have you. But it's a great way for you to just to start talking about what, what really the Bible says. Here's what happens. It's appointed unto man wants to die and then face the judgment. You know, what happens in the judgment? Well, we're going to stand there and give account for our righteousness. You know, are you a righteous person? You know, I'm, I wasn't, I'm not, you know, I, I, I am today because of Jesus Christ, but I wasn't. Here's the sin in my life. And so, you, again, you're just kind of taking a back door right into the gospel message by opening up with a very simple question like that, that, that probably most people are interested in. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, are there barriers? Verse 13, do you feel barriers separating you from God? You know, what are they? Well, you know, my mom died when I was little, okay. There's a lot of things like that that come up in people's hearts that they, 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 they hold against. It's a good, good chance for you to minister to them, help them see it for what it is, and move into the discussion about Jesus Christ. But you're looking at trying to reach the felt needs of people. You know, you're struggling with something in life. You know, uh, what about when, you know, at funerals, you know, people that, that need to, maybe you know that their, some relative died. It's a great opportunity because they're thinking about death and what happens after that number 17 do you think god has a plan for each person's life so there's just very simple questions non-threatening and they may or they may not open a door but it's it's a good chance that you're at least pivoting in the conversation like you know if you're if ask a kid hey what are you going to do when you get out of high school well, i'm going to go to college do you ever wonder if god has a plan for your life i mean it's a, so you're in a conversation about just life a little question like that can pivot the whole thing, and now you're talking about eternity. You're talking about Jesus Christ. You're talking about God creating you for a purpose and a reason. Are you prepared for that? How do you become prepared? You know, that kind of a thing. So it's good to think about these things and, and start, you know, practicing using some of them, and you'll find yourself uh, many times opening up conversations to share the gospel where in the past you would have just, you know, blown on by it. So rather than, I think initially I was going to have you guys sit down and come up with your own ideas, and maybe you have a few, but I, I thought instead I would just give you a bunch as a, as a help. That being said, do any of you have a couple of ideas of ways that you've been able to start? Okay, Bill, go ahead. Yeah, what I always had a hard time with is with somebody I'm not going to be with very long. I'll probably never see him again. And I just did this the other day, and it's almost like it's a good opening. I'll say, hey, uh, I just met you, I'll probably never see you in life again. The chances are very slim. I said, I really go away from them very bad if I didn't share something with you. I said, can I tell you something? They all say, yeah. Yep. I tell them I can say. That's a good one. Phil. You know, I like to open a conversation, especially if it's a stranger, uh, just by saying, can I tell you what happened to me? Yeah. And share my testimony mm -hmm. I and then of course you could insert the Romans wrote in your testimony. exactly uh, absolutely that's a good one can I tell you what happened to me I mean everybody wants to you know, hear the story what happened to you man I had an experience I told him, Bill uh, just a couple of years ago I was working downtown Cleveland I had a business appointment but I wanted to pick up lunch first. It was a one o'clock appointment, so I was uh, I parked the car and I was walking uh, down the sidewalk. 
And in front of this little barbecue joint, I saw they had like an outdoor cafe, and there were two young black kids uh, sitting out there. And I just engaged a little conversation. Hey, is the is barbecue good in this place, you know? Oh, yeah, man, it's so good. And, and something, it just came out of me. Would you guys like to join me for lunch? Oh, yeah, we're hungry. Yes. And we went in and got a sandwich, came back out on the, on the sidewalk cafe, began eating. And then I said, can I tell you what happened to me? And I began sharing my testimony as we were eating the sandwich. And I led one of the guys to the Lord. Well, praise God. It's awesome. The other guy was a Christian already, but but it was just a lunch appointment, you know. I, I mean, a lunch uh, hour that uh, I engaged and the Lord led, you know. See, and you could have just walked in there and said, "I got to eat lunch. I got a bit. I got a busy schedule. I got places to go, people to see." But you were you allow the Lord to to interrupt your life. And look what happened. Praise and God. Because we were kind of in an outdoor setting, and it gave a little bit more freedom to uh, get a little rowdy, you know. <laughs> yeah. Pray the sinner's prayer. Oh, I got a. Oh, I've been ordering for five or six years now, but they're they're little gospel tracks, but they're they've got all the different kinds. I just I happen to have some with me, but uh, because I worked with a bunch of people for a couple of years on a job and just never had the opportunity to stay with them and. And talk with them. I got different ones that y'all have probably seen them before, but they're usually optical illusions or something just to oh, yeah. get people's attention. But they got the gospel in the back. It goes through the the gospel. But uh, usually they'll see you working around, or they'll see you working, but you can never talk with them and spend any time with them. And uh, they'll they'll know who you are, so they'll they'll see something that's usually a little different if you're trying to live for the Lord. And then uh. That kind of hand in hand with it, they know what the gospel is and they see why you're doing it. So. Amen. Can I see those? That's just one of them. Yeah, we will have at the uh, at 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 the rib burn off. You mean? Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna uh, have a bunch of those booklets. Yeah. We can go through. And then I also ordered. I think we're gonna have about 800 tracks. I try to find. Simple because I, I've looked at a bunch of tracks online and a lot of them are very wordy. You know, I know I know there's a lot of things you can say, but some of these are very simple. There, I can't remember if there was one that was Romans Road or not, but we'll have about I think there's eight different kinds or no, yeah, eight different kinds, maybe 100 each, so about 800 of them. So there's all different kinds, but they're very simple, kind of like ABC type, you know, bum bum bum. So someone could read it pretty quickly and be done with it. So anyhow, um, I just found that um, when I really relate to a person and I'm in a conversation, if I really see what they're about, get on the level and just see what they're talking about. Yeah. Uh, they're actually talking about going out party the night before. Uh, you know, I'll talk to them and say, you know, I, I understand. I've been there. You know, just relate to them. Yep. How what what they're what they're talking about, yeah. and then as you're talking to them, just mention to them how good God is, and like you said, what He's done for you. Amen. That's very important to, you know. Again, we're not here to just dump off information. We're we're here to care for people, and um, I think when you sit down and you share the gospel with somebody and you they really sense people can sense if you're there as a salesman or if you genuinely care about what's going on in their life and showing an interest in them you know who are you where are you from what do you do you know what's going on in your life and even some of these questions you know if you ever thought about i mean what, what does god mean to you do you feel like you have a closeness to the lord or do you feel distant from him in some way what what, what brought that on I mean, these are ways you can begin to get that person to open up and share. And as they do, you'll, you'll get a feel for where they're at and where they're coming from. And it may even give you um, a chance to, to really link the, the gospel with an issue in your life, like the woman at the well. You know, the very, very natural thing, plus the sins of her life. You know, Jesus kind of interwove his message to her around who she was as a person. 
You know, she was basically, uh, I, mean, I don't want to call her a prostitute, but just very loose living woman who was doing her daily job, coming down to get water. But he was able to take those very natural parts of her life and have a conversation about it that led her to believe in him. And then she went back to her way cost. She told the whole town, come and see this man who's told me everything about myself. Hey, Kirk, another thing I, I thought of was the importance of, you know, of being a salesman. There's always the importance of closing the deal, you know. Yeah. Uh, really, being bold to challenge someone after you've presented uh, the message. Yeah. Can, can I pray with you now? Yeah. And, you know, I think Jesus and how he ended the Sermon on the Mount, you know, he said, uh, he who heard, he hears these words of mine and acts upon them, Will be likened to a wise man that built right. his house upon a rock. But just to be bold to challenge, because the Spirit of God is there. Right. Giving the message, it is the power of God, and the Spirit of God is working through your words. And just to ask the question, can we pray now? Would you like to receive the gift now? Amen. I think it does help an awful lot if you really did. Oh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Good to know. Yeah. Are you married? You have kids? You know, that kind of thing. I think it's just getting nice a little couple of minutes, you know, not to hit right away. Yeah. On the front of your cover, the very scripture that Phil was alluding to I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. So let's close in prayer. I might have on page 13 just a couple things we can be praying for. One is, you know, take it upon yourself to get, become, hang on a minute. Take it upon yourself to become familiar with the gospel. You know, read through some of the scriptures, you know, the things we shared today, other resources, they're, they're out there. There's tons of them. Just become familiar. And then you've got to make a decision to preach the gospel. That's really your commitment. No one can do that for you. You've got to say, you know what, this is what I'm going to do. And uh, next thing you can do is pray for boldness. I love this scripture in Ephesians 6. Pray also for me that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. I love that. It's a great prayer, and it's one that we can pray, especially if we're on the side of being timid or unsure or uncertain. Say, God, give me boldness. Let me open my mouth fearlessly because I am an ambassador. And then finally, just recognize that you're not alone. It is the Lord who's working with you in conjunction with you sharing the gospel. You are giving his word. His spirit is there to open the hearts of people. His word will not return to you void or return to him void. So let's pray together, and I ask that God would help all of us uh, grow from the things we've learned, but actually act upon them and step out, and the Lord will begin to use us all. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you for the people who've come here today to hear about how to share the gospel. I pray you'd help us to be fearless and bold as we proclaim it, Lord God. Give us wisdom. Lord, help us to see this harvest field that's out there, that we can see it with your eyes, not our own. Lord, that we can, we can understand that you've put us here in this time, in this place, for a reason. There are people in our network of relationships that need to hear about Jesus. Lord, open the doors for us to have that happen. Lord, help us to take those steps. Help us to learn the scripture. Lord God, give us the tools that we need. And I pray as we step out in these minor areas, Lord, going up to the, up to the rib burn off, and maybe this thing with Billy Graham later in the fall, that you would just give us the boldness to step out and to begin to learn and dip our feet into the waters and learn a great thing about what it, what it means to follow you in the ministry of reconciliation. In Jesus' name we pray. I want to close with one last illustration. Big circle. Big circle. Think of a big circle. In that circle, there's a big circle on the page and there's a little circle on the page. You got the picture? The big circle says... The magic happens here, and I don't like the word magic, but let's say the, the excitement happens here, okay, in the big circle. Who can guess what the little circle says? 
my comfort zone. <laughs> the excitement happens here. My comfort zone keeps me here. <laughs> so you got to jump, but this is where all the excitement is. <laughs> okay? God bless you guys. Thanks for coming. Take some time to share your love, and we'll see you. Yes.